Well, this year we've seen 5G go commercial, uh, which I think was an impressive achievement in itself, given the time frame of, of standardization, but really uh, only in a very limited way, of course. You know, operators are only just starting to roll out 5G. So in 2020, we'll start to see coverage become the theme, uh, I think, for, for, for CSP's deployments, not just in, in cities, which is what we're seeing now, but addressing the larger population of, of some of the markets uh, that, that those operators are, are, uh, are selling to. Real 5G uh, will come because 5G core is coming, Cloud Run is coming, standalone new radio is coming, Therefore, we'll see some service providers claiming I have the real 5G, which can be you know, uh, argued as true, because today we are still in the NSM, or non-standalone radio, meaning we are encored in, into LTE. What else? We may see some uh, first iteration of network slicing, and that is coming from the fact that 5G core is going to be available next year in 2020. In the telecom space, what I see as the top trends for 2020 are essentially around 5G becoming real. And some people will say 5G is real today, and they're mostly talking about radio, which is great. We need better radio. We need faster connections. But now operators are really starting to think about how do we create new services for the enterprise. And so they're starting to think about edge computing. So all of a sudden, edge has become this real thing as opposed to sort of this pie in the sky thing that has been lately. And once you start Start talking about edge, you start talking about containers because edge resources are limited. You need something more lightweight, more flexible. And so there's this whole discussion in the industry right now about how we move to containerization much more quickly than we thought we needed to. And because we've already virtualized some functions onto virtual machines, how do we manage virtual machines and containers jointly in sort of a seamless environment to make sure that we're getting the service quality that we want? It's a much more mature conversation from my perspective than it was even last year. Key market development trends for 2020, I think, will be moving towards the cloud native core. I think that's the key enabler for everything that we're hoping for from 5G. And we will start to see uh, a few early deployments um, from which the, the rest of the operator community will learn a great deal. So I think that's a very uh, important trend for 2020. Um, I'd like to say that we're going to see a similar movement towards um, the cloud RAN. I think that's a lot slower and more challenging in the big, the main macro RAN. But however, I think we will start to see some interesting um, virtualized and even cloud native architectures coming to enterprise RAN, small cells, uh, city networks. And again, that will be important for learnings um, for when operators take the plunge and apply those technologies to their, their major, their main RANs. Um, I think another trend will be just to continue to um, expand LTE. And it's easy to forget about LTE, but certainly in our forecasts at Analysis Mason, we don't um, foresee investment in 5G overtaking that in 4G until 2022 or three. And we have to remember there are an awful lot of markets that have got no 5G spectrum and won't have for some years. So I really think it's important that we look at how LTE will continue to be enhanced. It has a strong roadmap, even for operators that are advanced in 5G. Most of them are saying they will not just maintain LTE, but actually enhance it for years to come. So I do think it's really important that the industry focuses on how LTE and 5G can best work together in the most flexible, dynamic way so that operators can continue to take advantage of both technologies. I think one of the more important developments for the market next year is going to be um, the new availability of different spectrum options for private LTE network deployment. And you know, um, we have the CBRS band, which has recently become available, um, so a shared spectrum option. We have the unlicensed options still. Um, uh, and, we, and we have more and more private concerns considering purchasing licensed spectrum or leasing licensed spectrum. And there are a few different options becoming available. So I think that for the first time in the six or seven years that I've been following what's going on in the energy verticals, there will become widespread interest in and ultimately investment in spectrum for private LTE networks.